Hey there, StarCraft fans. It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today it's going to be a cheese compilation. Number 108 for July 2024. July has 31 days. And the last Wednesday of the month when I post cheese is the 31st. So you've been waiting for a while if you're waiting for it. Top side of Crimson Court. It's going to be Probe Scout, our red Protoss player in the bottom left. It is Patches, our blue Terran player. This is 5,000 MMR for cheese this month. Thank you very much for submitting your cheese, Mr. 5000 MMR. And if you want me to cast your cheese, send it to falconpaladin at gmail.com. Subject of cheese. I'll get them to my screeners. Thank you so much, Sniper Monkey and Stefan and Jim for going through the replays today. I appreciate it. Forge coming in here for a probe scout. Ooh, are we cannon rushing a Terran? Are we doing this thing? What's the play? What's the play going to be here? God, the thing about cannon rushing a Terran is they have bunkers. They have access to things like, oh, you know, oh okay, uh, siege tanks at some point. So, wow, that was some really fast cannon tossing down. Bam, bam, bam. That was like throwing down force fields. Really fast stuff here from Probe Scout to start this thing off. Let's rock immediately throwing up another barracks. And as soon as this barracks is done, a bunker is going to come up. Oh, canceled. What the... So canceled the one, replanted it, has a cannon coming up here. This cannon's not in... Mm, is this cannon in range of this refinery? That's what I'd like to know. And then he cancels that one and throws up another one. Got the micro and gets the probe out. And cancels these two in order to throw up a gateway. Ah, this is so good. And then two more cannons coming up. Now that they're covered by this one, look at this. Oh, no, he can hit the refinery. Can he cover the cannons, though? Yes. Did just kill an SCV and get three hits off. This one Marine can't quite deal. And the probe's like, well, I would like to have you shoot at me instead of these warping in cannons for just a minute. And the bunker's done. Bunker done. Not looking good for patches. The name of this replay is, how did we get here? <laughs> I think that is a question for the Terran player caller. All no, where are the cannons? We'll go down. Okay, excellent stuff. Canceled a couple more of them. Uh, I don't know. I mean, how do we do this? Oh, the SCVs just abandoned everything. I don't know that you needed to abandon everything here. Weird. Okay, that was nice. Getting rid of the cannon, salvaging the bunker. Coming down, landing your base down here on the slow ground. That's the other thing Terran has against cannon rushing, y'all. It's the magic of taking your base and putting it somewhere else if it's getting cannon rushed. Man, I know that Protoss and Zerg would love to have that option. Also, they'd love to start off with a ranged unit as their tier one unit, like Marines are. Be pretty great, right? Okay, so Patches is holding on. He's holding on exceptionally well. That was an aggressive, really well-executed cannon rush. Here for Probe Scout. Ah, uh, ooh. Um, yep. So I don't know how you follow this up if you're Probe Scout, to be honest. I mean, to be fair, he already has a cyber core, and he's getting a second gas, and he's not expanding. Because, you know, some, like, giant SCV Marine all-in. That's really absolutely 100% in play here for patches. So, we don't want to expand and have nothing but probes to fight with. Some stalkers would be good. And it's a race. No. Gateway goes down before. I imagine that was a zealot that was coming out and probably not a stalker. Look at this positioning. Look at it. Dude, patches knows what's up. Totally knows what's up, my guy. And I mean, mm -hmm. like, he's a great, great Terran player, <laughs> obviously. 5,000 MMR is really uh, no joke. So yeah, uh, looks like the last time the MMR ranges were updated, which was the July 29th, which is like the day I'm casting this. This is a great website. Look at this thing. BernieSC2.github.io. Huh. Cool. Oh, right. And this is happening, too, by the way. We're proxying gates. We have a cannon and a shield battery, and that's hilarious. But Grandmaster, in 1v1, North America is 4,300 to 6,100. So good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well into GM. 5,000 NMR is way to GM here, which is why Patches is killing it with these Marines. My gosh. He is just avoiding cannons unless he has them depowered. He can, oh yeah, snipe that probe. And then this pylon going down would be a massive problem. Shield battery first. I, you know what? Man, Patches is so smart. 
He kills the shield battery first because then the stalker pops out and doesn't have a shield battery to help him. And now you go after the pylon and now everything's depowered. And now it's a stalker that doesn't have the support of a shield battery. And okay, it's super dead. All right. Dang, patches. Uh, it's 15 to 0 army supply right now. You know, I'd honestly walk across the map if I was patches. I don't know about spending time killing these warp gates. Uh, maybe keep a guy behind to make sure they don't get repowered, but I would walk across the map and try to win now. Again, 17 to 2 army supply is a good thing, but oh, we're getting sentries for force fielding the ramp. Oh, probe scout. Oh, probe scout. I don't know, man. Patches has a second base. He just calm sat at your butt. He scat. Okay, here though. He wanted to see if there's an expansion, and there wasn't. What a great opening cheese game here. Again, high level GM stuff. Looking good for the Americas server. I'm pretty sure that's where Probe Scout plays. I mean, these names do not really feel Korean to me, but who knows? Probe Scout, maybe he's on the Korean ladder. I know he's an English speaker. He's in my Discord server, which if you want to join the Discord server, there's a link in the description to that, or ask for it. And okay. So you don't want to like panic force field for one Marine. But I think Probe Scout's dead. I don't know what the follow-up is here. Maybe DTs? Maybe one behind Dark Shrine? Maybe some incredible disruptor shots? But we are... Okay, Patches 2 Basin. I mean... He's got mules. Probe Scout does have a better worker count. Because he didn't lose any workers to the initial aggression. That didn't exist because he was the aggressor. And then plus there was that lost mining time and lost unit producing time when uh, the orbital was floating over this way. Plus... There's a second base, but two mules is good, man. Two orbitals tossing down mules is awesome. So I think Patches is okay economically. And then Probe Scout's like, well, maybe I'm the aggressor now. I don't know. This is a lot of Marines. Are they going to get any upgrades today? Are we going to tech lab anything? Because that's a factory, and these are reactor <laughs> barracks. So I don't think we're getting stim. We're getting plus one attack for the Marines, though. I, man, they'd really like to have stim, though, wouldn't they? Wouldn't they, Patches? I guess not. Alright, um... <laughs> so, the cannon's at the top of the ramp against unupgraded marines. Oh no, they have stim. I'm a huge... Huge missed that. Where is the tech lab? Oh, it's in here! I'm an idiot. Combat shield is coming up. You guys are like, dude, Falcon, combat shield's on the way. There's a tech lab somewhere. You're right, stim is done, combat shield's on the way, plus one attack's coming in. I should have known that Patches wouldn't just skip stim. Be ridiculous. So he scans in, call Terran. The scouting capabilities are really, really good. And it's a Colossus. What? Colossus in a warp prism. Against Marines without armor or attack upgrades or medevacs. This is so crazy. Dude, I love this game. I love this game so much. Oh! Probe Scout's like, what? You think I could just cannon rush? Look at this. You don't get to 5,000 MMR if all you can do is cannon rush. Okay, maybe you can. Maybe if you're print F. Oh! Okay, Marines bust up the ramp stim. Take down the cannons. No shield battery overcharge is used there. Shield battery goes down. The robotics facility is working on making another Colossus, but that is not happening. Just Barely, though, on the other side of it, this is a 12-kill Colossus. The Stalkers and Sentries are here, and Zealots are here murdering everything. Oh, he force-fielded the turret so it couldn't be repaired. Wow. And the turret is now gone. On the other side, though, Patches, we're at a base race scenario. Ladies and gentlemen, Probe Scout running. He has enough money to make another Nexus, and Patches can just uh, have another base by running away. So that's good for him. Yeah, Terran have some nice advantages in this matchup sometimes. Suddenly 28 to 26 army supply. And there's splash damage here. There's the recall. The recall finishes. Patch's entire army gets obliterated. Doesn't take down the Nexus. There is 69 hit points on that thing. Nice. What an epic amount of cheese for game one here. This is awesome. Oh, I might epic tag this cheese comp. This has been... Brilliant. Brilliant. I cannot believe Probe Scout saved this. Where'd all his probes go? Mm, it's got 11 of them. They're coming back. There they are. They're coming back now. Okay. And Probe Scout says, can we finish this off with slow zealots? This Colossus, man. Oh, there's a single Viking. I love that. Oh, it can get shots off. Guardian shield gets popped up. It can get shots off on the warp prism, too. 
No, but my gosh, just not enough sustain on the ground there. Four patches. This Colossus, man, 24 kills on that thing. I mean, that's not like an all-time record or anything, but it is not bad at all. All right, well, all for, again, this is a weird game. So, like, every single, well, most of the unit-producing structures are outside here at the third base for patches. This Viking, oh my gosh, he's going to land. He does bonus damage versus mechanical units, which probes are. But then a Stalker comes in and patches GG's out and Probe Scout gets the win. Holy Hannah. That was insane. Why are we still here, though? Oh, because Probe Scout is trying to run up a score. Nope, we're not going to do that. But <laughs> 10 minutes, GG, absolutely crazy, crazy stuff, man. Absolutely crazy stuff. What a GG. What an epic game one for cheese compilation. One of the best cheeses I have seen on the channel in years, probably. Probe Scout gets the win here. Resources lost, 3,900 for him, 5,100 for patches. Uh, we ended up, I mean, only two zealots died. That's kind of surprising. There are five zealots remaining. These zealots are beefy boys. They got some work done. Two kills, four kills, nine kills on that zealot. This one has two. Man. Yeah, this started with a cannon rush. This started with a cannon rush, exceptionally, empirically well executed, forced patch to Patches to abandon his main. From there, he's looking okay. He goes for Marines. He gets the stim. He gets the combat shield. And Probe Scout rushes into a Colossus with a Warp Prism. He gets slow zealots. Gets stalkers. Gets sentries. Guardian shield was huge. And he gets the win. I... <sighs> Yeah, is this is this life? Is this life at this level? Man. All right, so that is a GG. And that's game one. Let's go to game number two. Are they all this good? Honestly, probably not, but I sure hope so. Game two, we're on site. Delta, Probe Scout is back. Bottom right, gonna be Probe Scout. Top left, gonna be Rescue. Again, around 5,000 MMR, America's GM uh, server. Not server, but the league. Man. And if you want me to cast your cheese, again, send it to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com. Subject of cheese. The rules are no worker rushes unless there's a new spin on it that nobody has ever seen before. We have a lot of worker rushes in previous cheese compilations, and they pretty much look the same, right? Right. So that's rule number one. Rule number two is keep it under seven minutes unless there is action that extends it beyond seven minutes. And past 10 minutes or so, you get into shaky ground, but Probe Scout's last game did go past 7 minutes, but ended at 10 minutes, and man, there was so much action, I didn't even notice until the end of the game. So, excellent job there, Probe Scout. And rule number 3 is the higher in the ladder you are, the more likely it is we're going to cast your game. So Probe Scout took advantage of that this month. If you're a GM player... Learn from that. So, it's a pool first play here against a scouted cannon rush from Probe Scout. Probe Scout says, eh, I'm still gonna go for it. Ugh, pulling the drones and then walling off with a single pylon. Probe Scout knows these maps, man. Knows how many pylons you need to wall off. And what, what's the purpose? I guess the purpose of this pylon is a backup pylon in case this one goes down or this one goes down. Let's see that APM. Let's see that APM. This pylon is down and the cannon is up. Very, very good. Alrighty then. What's the play? I mean, the good thing is your pool's already done, Rescue. So that's nice. I wonder if Rescue's played against Probe Scout before and is like, this guy cannon rushes. At least sometimes. Let's pull first this guy. And if he's not cannon rushing, we'll get out there and try to ruin his day. Okay, so one gas steal, but no second gas steal because Rescue took the extractor first. That was a very close thing, though. And another cannon coming up. Now, this is the problem for Rescue, is that he's a one-basing Zerg against a one-basing Protoss. Is bad. Is basic math. Is basic math of StarCraft that has been this way since 1998. When Brood War was released, StarCraft 1 in April or March, Brood War in November, at least in North America, maybe October, whatever it was. I think, did Korea get it first? I'm realizing now. No, they didn't. 
because they didn't know how big it was going to be in Korea. If, <laughs> like, by the time StarCraft 2 rolled around, StarCraft was the national sport of Korea and had been for like 10 years. And so they announced StarCraft 2 in Korea. That's how big it was. Oh, we snuck a drone out. We snuck a drone out, and we're going to try to put it over here, rescue, are we? Oh, that gets scouted by Probe Scout. Dude, he's being so active with this probe, too. This is amazing. So second gas dies, and again, the second gas is all about, I want to get some Ravagers and Roaches out. Maybe just Roach, but Ravagers especially against these cannons, right? So the Zealot, oh, there's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing rescue can do about this, man. All right, well... One zealot doesn't actually kill a hatchery that's coming up before it comes up. You need two zealots for that, or a zealot and like five probes, which you probably don't want to pull some probes and send them all the way up here just to kill that hatchery. Also, we're spending a lot on spines, man. All right, this might be a misread. This might be a misread. I don't know that Probe Scout wants to kill you now. I think he's pretty happy keeping you on one base while he gets stuff and says, you come to me, you know? So we're going to try to... Spread creep and creep down here, but then you're going to have to come in range of cannons. And like I said, this zealot's not enough to take it down by himself. Stalker helps, though. Oh, got an overlord. That's nice. Not a supply block on rescue, but uh, might as well be. And then are you going to bother building anything out of this? Not with this stalker here, no. Doing bonus damage to the building because it is an armored thing. And that's what stalkers do. So, yeah, there's the roach warren. Double gas is happening. Immediately fires up three roaches. I'm going to turn them into three Ravagers and then start trying to burn down these cannons with Corrosive Biles. But we have a robotics facility here. We're making Immortals and Stalkers and you're a one base nerd. And, oh my gosh, who got credit for this kill? Oh, just making sure these drones don't do anything. Yeah, just making sure whatever pops out of here dies. That's the plan. And, wow, okay, we made a drone there. Why? I don't know. Ah, oh, no creep spread for you. I bet the Immortal can hit this spine crawler without these guys hitting it. But hold on. The Ravagers are scarier. Here we go. Cross the Biles immediately. Oh, Stalker takes some hits. A little bit sloppy there. Careless from Probe Scout. Immortals aren't really a big deal as one Immortal dies immediately to this Immortal because... Or one Immortal. One Roach dies immediately to this Immortal. Cannon gets taken down by Cross the Bile. Rescue is not a 5,000 MMR player because he's going to panic a move into this thing and die although he's kind of a moving into this thing isn't he Ugh. now there's a warp prism we've seen how dangerous probe scout is with a warp prism however there are queens here so the anti-air oh, oh 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 okay never mind never mind mortal actually dies oh and the warp prism does too rescue rescue doing some stuff right now depowering nope not depowering all this stuff because this isn't well the robo gets depowered that kind of hurts so Probe Scout's in trouble. It's 27 to 12 army supply. Roaches and Ravagers, a big scary amount of them. There are queens that can't really threaten him all that much. Rescue is going to go ahead and try to get a second base here, but he only has 100 minerals, which isn't great. And again, I think these spines were wasted. They were wasted, is what they were. They didn't provide any value. I guess technically they kept him alive, right? Against maybe if Probe Scout was sending a bunch of slow lots in here, it's going to be a pain in the butt to deal with. But otherwise... Man, these all could have been drones, and this base could have been faster, and hindsight is 2020, I guess. I'm trying to think, what do you do here in this situation? You four gate it. Actually, three gate robo it? Yeah, you three gate robo it, which the overseer scouts because rescue is not a scrub. I would not have scouted this at all. I would have been like, boy, I sure hope the Protoss doesn't have anything that can kill me. I'm going across the map, and then I would die and then be very sad. But he gets a good scout off, sees what's going on. Yeah, look at this. Look at all this that he knows. Out of energy. That Dahaka? Did I not know there's a Dahaka voice? Announcer voice? That's cool. Cross of Bile dodged. Okay, so the, that first round of Cross of Bile did hit a stalker, but Probe Scout took an extra, extra oath to not let that happen again. So now Rescue's in an okay position. Ooh, he's Nidusing too. Yeah, the Roaches out front, not exactly what you want here, but also the Ravagers are squishy. They're not armored, but they have so much less HP than a roach does. But the roaches take bonus damage from stalkers and from immortals, so it's like... Mm. Roaches aren't great here. Oh, and then the force fields! Uh, cannon dies to cross the bile, but everything that got force fields up at the, up at the top of the ramp died, and then this guy dies too. Nice. Force field there too. 
Nidus erupts uh, right here, but there's literally nothing. Okay, well, that kind of sucks. Just go home. Go home. It was a fun attempt. I kind of feel like if you'd showed up with the queens and the roaches and the raptors popping out of that Nidus, that would have been great. But also, if you hadn't been attacking the front, Probe Scott probably would have seen the Nidus earlier and taken it down, right? Right. So here we are at seven minutes. It's a two basin, Zergy Zerg. He's at 37 workers. He's really been droning up here on the attack, which is what you want to do. He's throwing up a spire. And here comes Probe Scout. He's like, we gotta shut this down. We cannot allow this to stand. Either I need a second base, or I need to go kill the Zerg soon. So the longer the situation maintains, the worse it is for me. Rescue kind of doing all right. I do not know what these overlords are doing. Like, why are they all patrolling here? What's the play? I guess just kind of keep some out of harm's way, but they could just float, too. <laughs> I love this. Proxy gate at the third base of rescue. Yeah, getting a third base here was probably a mistake, dude. You know, you can't afford a third base here. Probe Scout's on one. Get out of here. He does cancel it. So that's great. Uh, Spire going to finish soon, but that's a lot of stalker. I don't know that you want a Spire. Oh, okay. Well, uh, fighting with your spines here might actually go pretty well. He does have some units, but he's also Nidusing, um, which these stalkers are patrolling, but not actually catching this Nidus somehow. What the heck? So a couple spines die. Probe pulls back. Wings. That's why you have a cannon in your mineral line, friends. For this reason, nothing gets done with that. Two Niduses that accomplish nothing, and that's 75 gas each Nidus, man. Plus the minerals, which you kind of care less about as a Zerg player, but whatever. Yeah, uh, some mortals would be great against these spines, but also stalkers are pretty good, too. They're pretty good. Not as good as the mortals are, but, you know. Mutas are out, so I don't know if they're going to fly across the map and try to kill the Protoss in a base race type thing, or where the heck are they? I guess they're not here yet. Okay, rescue. Oops, Stalker goes down, but all the static defense is gone now. Excellent. Mutas are just like, oh gosh, what are these overlords doing down here? You should be patrolling with your... Okay, all right. The supply block on rescue. It's not actually a supply block, but kind of is. If Mutas. But it's against a Protoss that doesn't have a Stargate, so like I'm kind of okay with it. All right, man. Roaches, queenslings, and mutas come in on top here, too. What are they focusing down? I don't know. Are they focusing anything down here? It doesn't really matter. Nice. Force fields keeping that ground army out. The mutas engaging by themselves is not great. Sentries are surprisingly good against mutas. Historically, it turns out, surprisingly good against mutas. Still, Probe Scout is on one base. I <laughs> love this. This time, Probe Scout's probe pathing brings him to where the Nidus is and is going to kill it. On the other side, Roach is fighting hard. This Colossus, man, 17 kills. Colossus in the hands of Probe Scout are serious business, yeah? I think that's it. I think that's it. 32 to 18 total army supply. Every Nidus that Rescue has tried today has accomplished nothing for him. Those are resources that could have gone to more queens or more mutas or something. And that's a GG. Probe Scout gets the win and again wants to stay stay in the game. Oh. That was great. That was amazing. Way to go. So good job, Probe Scout, getting the win here against an evil, evil Zergy Zerg who, I don't know if Mutas was the right answer there. I'm trying to think what's the better answer there. Honestly, Ravager. Just like a ton of Ravager. I think the range, the damage output, the corrosive bile, so that, you know, the army has to dodge around it. And I just don't know that Mutas got the job done. Also, just don't worry about Nidus. This guy's on one base. Like, no. Just hold. Holding is the name of the game, I think. Rescue didn't quite, I think, have a perfect read on it. But I, from this perspective, on watching a replay, you have full hindsight 2020. Yada, 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 yada. So GG, 8,900 resources lost from Rescue. Only 5,600 lost from Probe Scout. End of the day, there are five roaches and a queen remaining against 10 Sockers, a Colossus, 
and a zealot. And are there sentries in here? 20 kill Colossus, not bad. I don't think any of the sentries survived this. Actually, we can just pull this up, huh? Nope, no sentries survived. And we lost uh, all six of them that remained. So it's all good. It's all good. And that's game two of our cheese comp. Man, so far so good. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Game three, we're on site delta. Bottom right, probe scout top left. The enemy is a good time with a blue Pepe spinning logo. I think it's a... Wow, the blue with the yellow here. It's like a Pepe Zealot, maybe? Just kind of cropped to just show the head and just... I don't know. Anybody seen a Pepe Zealot being drawn somewhere? I think we're gonna... I'm gonna Google it here while we see if it's gonna be a cannon rush or not. All right, uh, bring up my keyboard. Pepe Zealot. Uh, no. Pepe, Pepe Zealot Starcraft? Not a, Google doesn't think it's a thing, so I don't know, man. But it's a forge coming up from Probe Scout. What's our guy on the other end doing? A gateway opening, and he sees the incoming probe and says, Hey, hey! I know what you're here for. I know what you're going to do. And, ooh. ooh doo -doo -doo -doo. Can't lose this first probe. That is so important. You don't lose that first probe. Second probe is coming. But the first one dying is absolutely disastrous. And oh, another pylon coming in. So, forcing probes off the line in multiple positions here. That's the thing about cannon rushing. Responding to a cannon rush is generally, I would say, more difficult than just doing a cannon rush. But to do a cannon rush at a super high level also requires a lot of skill. That pylon gets canceled. This pylon finishes. This pylon's getting hit by two pro. Ooh, four probes. So that's a canceled pylon there. This one dying's really important. Uh, th there are no cannons in production at this stage. And yeah, that got canceled. Uh, probably gonna cancel that pylon too. And then just the ability to adjust on the fly here. The adjustment on the fly for our guy Probe Scout today. Yeah, it's just like, okay, well, low ground's not going to work. Let's go back into high ground. Let's wall off this stuff. And a Zealot is out from a good time, which is awesome. Okay, so he's going to go ahead and take down this pylon. Bam. Get in here on top of this photon cannon. And this might actually be a hold. That's your cancel. Okay, good, good. Yeah, I think Probe Scout might have to abort mission here. He's making a gateway... Oh, right here. We're just going to let this come up, or... Oh, it's the X2 Zealots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Purifier. X2 Zealot. Wow, all right. Oh, uh, this... Well, all right. Probe Scout adjusting again. Back to the low ground, the man says. Oh, and he got a cannon up. What the heck? I missed that. Oh, and then he walls the Zealot out of his own base walls all of the zealots out of their main base because the gateway is outside of the main base. Dude, sickest, sickest, sickest plays here from Pro Scout. This guy is so mean. <laughs> now he's got a zealot inside the mineral line of a good time and good time's like, wait, 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 what? This is not how it's supposed to work. They fully surround the zealot. He ends up getting two kills. You know, probes are good fighters. I don't know how else to express this. Cancels that one because he doesn't need it. Puts the money to better use by what? Oh, he recalls his units in. Oh, he recalls his stalkers in because he can't get through. Well, there was a wall there. Not anymore. Oh, this is so bad. Shield battery coming up inside the mineral line of a good time. Pepe spinning lazily around the Nexus, observing what's going on here. And stalkers with shield batteries are pretty good. Ooh, if he could depower that shield battery. Good time is not paying attention to this. And now the shield battery... Oh, gets repowered by another pylon, though. This is some crazy high-level cheese, man. Both players are thinking several steps ahead right now. Oh, Zealots take down one of the stalkers, though... There are two zealots in here. The shield battery's out of energy for healing purposes. And now there are two cannons firing on the Nexus, and I think that's it. So it's interesting. It's brood more Nexus skin for a good time, but then it's purifier skin for the zealots. And then brood war probes. Anyway, I mean, shield battery up. Shield battery overcharges. Healing the Nexus. I had someone try to tell me once, you can't shield battery heal buildings. And I was like, 
Not right about that. Dude, look at the shield. Look at the shields that are back on this thing. Wow. This is crazy stuff. But I think Probe Scout is going to come through here. Yeah, too many cannons are coming up. And yeah, GG. Probe Scout gets it three games in a row. One against Terran, one against Zerg, one against Protoss. What a showcase from our guy, Probe Scout 2 here. That's not really his name. He's just Probe Scout. I'm guessing this is a second account of his. But yeah, like all hail Probe Scout. Do not come against this guy on ladder. He will cheese you and he will win. Yeah. All right, so Probe Scout, if you're watching, I would just request, if you're gonna send in multiple replays for the cheese comp, mix in a loss every once in a while. Just let the people know that just because it's a Probe Scout game doesn't mean it's a guaranteed win. We're kind of getting there at this point. So just a request from me if you're watching. You probably are, you sent these in. Anyway, yeah, I just, again, the adjustment on the fly in this game was nuts. He tries to go low ground, fails, goes high ground, fails, keeps the gateway alive, goes low ground again, allows him to get back into high ground. Like, the, <laughs> I would be like, ah, oh, my low ground cannon died. Well, I guess that's it then. And then just like GG out. But not Probe Scout. He has plans. He has plans upon plans upon plans. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff. And the shield, I mean, the defense hero, good time was good too. You don't get 5,000 MMR if you suck. So a good time did not go quietly. And that makes the more entertaining game, right? Right. Okay, I don't think we have any more Probe Scout stuff left. But, I mean, we have replays named Cheesing with Flo. Florencio might be involved in this cheese comp. We have one that is named Submit with 10 exclamation marks after it. So look forward to those, Cheese, and uh, we'll be right back. We're on Heavy Artillery. It's a 2v2 featuring Mad Scientist and not Bits Please this time. It is Da Salt Bay, which apparently is a Florencio alt name. So Florencio streams on Twitch. He's got his own YouTube channel. He does a lot of fun StarCraft and other games as well. So I'll put a link to his YouTube channel and his Twitch stream in the description here. Really chill guy, really cool guy. I've been subbed to him on Twitch for like years now, man. So, all right, so top side, it's gonna be the enemy, our um, red, I was gonna call him blue. It is a red Protoss player, Volt Harris. And then a blue Terran player, Dino Roar, who's getting early gas, like that is, that is some early gas. On the other side of it, it is Mad Scientist, our blue teal Protoss player, and then, uh, the Salt Bay, and my brain just wants to say bits please when it's Mad Scientist, but nope. He's our guy here. Dankcraft uh, spinning logo here for the clan Dankcraft, which is Florencio's particular, particular clan. And all is good so far. Nobody seems to be getting super proxied, although this probe's up to no good. And this probe from Florencio gets in. What does Flo have back home? It's a forge. The man is going to start a cannon rush from this low ground back here. Oh, he stacked him. <gasps> he stacked him. But now they're both in full view. So, like, I don't I, I guess you're chasing that one. Is he going to throw up a pylon or something? I'm really confused by this. He's like, you're not. Okay, so you... Didn't pay enough attention. Oh, he was waiting for enough minerals to do an absolutely crazy wall here. Holy Hannah. SCVs get pulled to deal with this. On the other side of it, Mad Scientist got some cannons up on the low ground and they're firing away on this high ground stuff. Marines blah, blah, dying. The probe providing some of that high ground vision that is necessary. Cannons coming up, but SCVs are pretty good fighters against buildings and pylons are no exception. Is this enough? For Volteris, it is a double cannon rush out of a double Protoss team. Are we surprised by this? Absolutely not. Not even close. Get in there, guys. Go, go, Dino Roar. Go, Dino Roar. Oh, he's too worried about this stuff. He's floating his barracks. He's going to lose another Marine out of carelessness. And then it's too late. He can't jump on the cannons because the cannons are up. And now, I mean, shield battery, sure. Shield battery gonna help us a little bit. Might need to pop shield battery overcharge here, sir. Okay, but stalkers against cannons with shield batteries. Double shield battery here. But it is draining the sh This one's already out. This guy, okay, this guy's out too. But one of the cannons died. That's big. That's really big. Meanwhile, this is still <laughs> happening. We are hardcore cannon rushing this Terran and a little bit too late on the response again. As these cannons come up, are you kidding me? 
right now. No, no, you're probably not kidding me. Wow. All right. Uh, so this is actually held. I'm impressed by this from Volteris. Super impressed. Unfortunately, uh, our guy Dino Roar had to abandon and relocate back here to the back base, which is fine. This appears to be taken care of as this probe is dead. Yeah. So this probe died. Being able to be a threat over here would still be really good. Uh, the salt bait uh, just pulled the probes. What the heck? Didn't wait. Wait. He does the stacking trick again. He does the stacking trick again. And then surprise! It's like 15 probes against your SCVs. SCVs are good fighters. But surprise attacks are surprise attacks, man. Dude, Dino Roar down to nine SCVs. Eight, seven, six. Stalkers come back to fight the Salt Bay. Florencio then recalls the probes out of there, leaves two of them behind, and gets... No, gets another one. No! No, it's not done yet! Oh my gosh, this probe! Five kill probe! Dino Roar's down to one S... This is Dino Roar's SCV, man. Where is his attention right now? It's not on this guy. Okay, uh, Dino Roar, okay, now he fights with his final SCV. These cannons are still here. Out of Mad Scientist, but unfortunately for our guy, Volteris, it's kind of a one base, uh, one versus two scenario here. Although, I mean, Mad Scientist doesn't, doesn't have anything other than cannons to throw down. So that's the issue here is that now there's a ton of stalkers out from Volteris. The recovery here from Volteris has been insane. APM check, on average, three, mm, on average, 170, closer to 200 here. Siege, wow, Dino Roar got a siege tank out in all of that chaos. Maybe siege it up, I don't know. There we go, siege it up, but the stalkers have it taken care of anyway. With good micro, shouldn't lose anything. And now everyone's in trouble. Mad Scientist is in trouble. Florencio's in trouble. They're hardwalling their front, getting cannons on the high ground, and just hoping against hope. Siege Tank Stalker doesn't make it over here in any amount of time to straight up kill them, because that's what we're going for. This has been an absolutely crazy good cheese comp, man. This has been high level. Good, good, good stuff. I know Florencio has been GM. I don't know if he currently is. I mean, don't pay attention to his APM all that much. The guy does not spam. He just plays well. He just executes well. And is cheesy as all get out and knows how to cheese. And you don't need a ton of APM to do that, you know? All right, man. Volterra's at 40 supply, which is mm, 20 supply for Mad Sun or for Flow. Okay, here we go. Ooh, this pylon is a bit of an Artosis pylon, yes. Bam, depowers that cannon. Probes come in to try to deal with it. Is there another There's another pylon over here, but zealots causing issues. The micro here is good. What is this? Oh, okay. We're just wiping out these pylons. I was like, there's no way Florencio got back there again. No way. Stalker sniped down a cannon. More cannons exist, though, and the stalker count is getting whittled down here. He has lost six stalkers today. He's back, though. He's like, we, there is no rest for the wicked. We cannot allow this evil double cannon rushing team to defeat us. But now they have shield batteries for their zealots and their cannons. And aww. Okay. Well, our guy Dino Roar is taking a second base at his main base, which is something you like to say. In cheese compilations, this is very entertaining stuff. Honestly, like, a Reaper would be good. I had to rewind so we don't get our super cool Dank Craft spinning logos anymore. Oh, but these ones still work. What the heck? What does that one still work? I don't know the rules of spinning logos, man. But this one is totally still here. It looks like a Heart of the Swarm. Like it's a purple StarCraft 2 trophy, so it feels like Heart of the Swarm era stuff, right? It does, yes. That Zealot is overextending. And it lives because shield battery. Nice. 
Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Mad Science is still kind of has pylons all over the place, but we're going to let them be for now. We need the tanks down here to push. Tanks are kind of the answer to all of this stuff. What's the... Florencio's making... Okay, good snipe on the forge. And then... Oh, hang on. Ooh, it's a good force field, except only one of the stalkers is getting hit by cannons. And the other ones are okay. So force field was all right. It was all right. Trying to have enough stalker shots to one volley down. Okay, going after this pylon. But the force field screws everything up. This is, yeah, that was a really good mess up the plan of your enemy kind of a thing. I'm guessing the Oracle is going to fly over here and start going to town on some probes. Or maybe go after some of these SCVs. Also, second base over here for Florencio. He ninja it somehow, some way. All right, siege tank up. Where's the other siege tank? There were two of them. Here he is. He's so late to the party, though. You got to keep this tank alive, man. You got to keep this tank alive, man. You got to unseize the tank and... Oh. Well, the Zealots all died. That is some small grace for Team North here, but uh, they really wanted that. Also, Mad Scientist has been over here for a minute, too. That purple is kind of hard to see on the minimap. Now the problem is that Volterras and Dino Roar think that they have Team South contained. And they don't. Remember what I said about Oracles? Zap, 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 Five kills on that one. Seven kills on that one. You can just burst through the normal healing of shield batteries because it's so bursty. The shield battery can't even kick in. It's like two Banshees. ba ba bam Actually hitting a probe at the same time. The shield battery can't heal through that. It's too fast and too much damage over a short period of time. So that's smart. Void Ray coming in. Void Ray and cannons. Probably Florencio's favorite unit. I love the Purifier probe mining animation. It is so beautiful. Meanwhile, the Zealots have charge now. And your tank can't really run from that. And your Stalkers don't want to run from that either because it sucks. And that's it. GG. GG. Dino Roar and Volteris tap out. Charge lots. They don't have any deal with... The army at this stage is five stalkers full of world terrorists and a tank for Dino Roar. So that was not going to work out in the long run. It was kind of just a rage quit. But the charge lot follow up here for Mad Scientist was hot. That was really, really cool stuff. So yeah, end of the day here. It was a not a big army. Resources lost. 1,500 to 3,300 for a team Mad Scientist and Flow. 4,300 and 2,100 for Volteris and Dino Roar. Hmm. Mm, so what is that? 6,400 versus like 48. So more cost efficient. Gets the win a lot. Who knew? Again, check out Florencio. YouTube, Twitch, great guy. Tell him Falcon sent you. He'll appreciate it. And good stuff for cheese number three. My goodness, this keeps going. <gasps> we need a slower cheese next maybe. Although maybe there isn't one in this comp. It's a ZVZ on Crimson Court. Top right, Genghis. Bottom left, Barcode. APM check. What are we spamming, guys? The current APM is 200 for Genghis. Oh, back down to 83, but... um, Okay, so nobody's spamming here. It's around 100 APM for both of these players. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to pull up the production tab. There we go. Welcome back, music. It's a pool first play here at 12 Supply for Genghis. 12 pool versus... Uh, uh, Maybe a hatch first at 16 supply for barcode. It's not a build order loss, but it is fairly hard to hold, man. You need to pull some drones to defend your hatchery if you take it first against a 12 pool. 12 pool into expansion. Here is Genghis. What is this build? I don't know, but that's... Oh, it's a 17 hatch from barcode. That's even worse, man. All right, okay, now, look, you have a drone here. You have 300 minerals. It is probably time to do it. Although, maybe instead, you want to make six slings. Yeah, so why is the drone down here? Is the build six slings in to expand? Because now you have 300 minerals again. And you're not spending it. All right, Genghis, I don't know what's on with what's going on with you, man. Maybe this is our slower cheese. Yeah, just hatch gas pool here. 17 hatch, a little bit... So oh, it's a pull into boys. All right, so this is kind of a worker rush. 
but it brings lings with it. I mean, this is, I don't want to say it's a standard ZVZ fare, but it kind of is. Man, especially, ooh, this is proxy spine stuff, isn't it? We see this in ZVZs at the professional levels all the time. ESL tournaments, GSLs, DreamHack, what have you. Katowice. ZVZs a lot of the time turn into this. The reaction time from Barcode was actually pretty hot. So here comes... You gotta spine this, right? You don't have 200 minerals because... Okay. We just have 200 minerals because we just want to fight. Man, I would throw down a spine so fast. Look at... <laughs> This drilling, this drilling from Barcode is hilarious. I don't even know who's holding on here. We can look at the worker count and see that Barcode has six, 13 workers to four, but the lane count is pretty good. Dude, this drilling by Barcode is insane. He's kind of with, oh, no, no, no. Worker count one to three now. It's hard to tell visually, but that's what it is. Oh, use the money for extra lings, but then Barcode had extra lings too. So it's three to one drones right now. That is quite the advantage. I don't know if this drone's going to make it home. It is. Yeah, Genghis had no backup plan. Genghis was like, so. Ooh, and then going for a spine crawler, going for a queen. More lings is good. More lings are coming from Genghis, though. So he's spending through all the resources he had left over here. Yeah, I wouldn't be droning anymore. No drones. Dude, this spine coming up is GG. Genghis knows it. He's on a timer. He needs to kill that spine, or he needs to win before the spine comes up. So we're fighting near the spine. Drones are coming out. Spine is going to finish and get one hit off. Kills the last drone. Kills a ling, but not enough of it. The queen comes out. Oh! Oh my gosh, the queen comes out. The queen is here. Circle of life on the queen. No, the, we got jumped on, boys. We got jumped on, and I think that's a hold by Barcode. It is. That's your GG. Nice hold, says Genghis, and Barcode gets the win. Huh. This cheese comp is going to kill me. My heart rate is through the roof. If I had one of those Apple watches, they'd be like, are you exercising? Are you currently having a heart attack? <laughs> anyway, good grief. Yeah, that was a pull all of the boys and all of the lings and try to kill your opponent. But insane drone stacking there from Barcode. He got so much value out of those workers, man. Bought enough time for the lings to come out. Bought enough time for him to get a spine down. Eventually, the queen was huge with four kills on her MVP. Without a doubt, two kills on this ling, one kill on this ling. That drone has four kills. This drone's a hero. This drone has zero, probably new. But yeah, look at this, look at this. It's two drones remaining for Barcode. One of them has four kills. He's a veteran of the wars, he is. That's what, mm, so good. I'm epic tagging the ever loving crap out of this cheese comp is what I'm doing. But again, thanks for sending your cheese in everyone. I mean, this is so fun to cast every month. Such a highlight, I really appreciate it. Uh, let's keep going. Greystone Ravine. Is this a new 2v2 map? I don't know if I recognize this one. Anyway, team right side, it is Simba, our red Terran player. His teammate is Protoss. It is GoFish. On the left side, you know these guys. It is Mad Scientist, our teal uh, Protoss player, and our Terran player, Bits Please. He's back. Bits Please and Mad Scientist conquering the 2v2 ladder with all manner of incredible cheeses. So, a PT team versus a PT team here. So we're going to see maybe some cannon rushing, maybe some proxy gates, maybe some proxy racks, maybe a quick, quick bunker here. Ooh, trying to wall off this super wide ramp here on Greystone Ravine. You are nowhere near your teammate, are you, when it starts. But, but this is the only ramp leading up. So that's why they are trying to wall this off. But I don't think they're going to have time to wall it off. Because proxy, proxy racks here, two racks proxy here from Bits Please. And on the other side, what's our guy doing? He's got a forge, so he's cannon rushing some, there it is. There we are, weird. Oh no, that's, no, that's Go Fish's gate. He's using Go Fish's gate to set up an appropriate position to go for the cannon rush. That's kind of ingenious, like I'm, Really, really impressed by the level of ingenuity coming out of some of these players' minds today. 
Wow. Okay, so that pylon is going to die. And mm, yeah, this is actually a pretty good response from Simba and Go Fish. But you actually have to get in here and start getting these cannons. You have to get start getting these cannons. No. Wait, what are you? Oh, uh, he, maybe he thought he'd hardwalled that, but he didn't have the money to anyway. Yeah, you were late on... Oh, but the... But both the cannons are unpowered because both the pylons died. But that cannon finishes... The pylon finishes, rather. Get the zealot. Everything else is secondary. Beautiful. Where are the... What are we making here? Marauders. Are we getting... Yep, concussive shell marauder rush here from Bits, please. On the follow-up. This is brutal. Concussive shell marauder rush is incredibly good against Protoss alone. Pretty good against Terran, too. Like, surprisingly good against Terran, too. Are we trying anything over here? No, Go Fish is defending. Because this base is huge. Look how big it is. All right, Marauders, we could use you. We could really use you. He's trying to get it there in a time when Concussive Shell is done. All right, so at least, this, I guess the whole point of this cannon rush was to make sure the front door is wide open. So marauders are here. takes me back sometimes when I look at Marauder attack animations I'm like you know remember the old battle reports with Dustin Browder early early like alpha beta days of Starcraft 2 and they were like this is the Marauder it does serious heavy damage to things like buildings and stalkers and roaches it also has a con an ability called concussive shell which slows I believe concussive shell came with Marauders it was not an upgrade in early StarCraft 2. How good is that? Man! It's almost as good... Extra Supply Depot down, he says. I don't know what you're talking about. It's almost as good as how Reapers had uh, grenades that did extra damage to buildings in the early days of Wings of Liberty. Yeah, that was great. Extra depots down. Anyway, the Marauders showed up. Terran died. Protoss is like, I can't have anything to deal with that. That's horrible. I mean, yes, cannons at the top of the ramp are nice, but when there are um, nine Marauders out, they really do well against buildings. And guess what? Cannons are buildings. So really nice one-two punch there from Mad Scientist and Bits Please. I don't think this is the last thing we're going to see of them, which is thumbs up. Yeah, this is maybe the greatest of all time, the greatest cheese comp I've ever done. Man, I hope every cheese comp from this point on is going to be this good. Like, so great. We're in 2024, man. Still incredible StarCraft 2 is being played. How awesome is that? Site Delta, it's more PvP. It is Wisco HC versus Random Cheese. Okay, so if you put the name Cheese in your name, people are going to assume you're cheesing, right? Let's see if Wisco is going to be ready for it. Bottom right, it is Random Cheese, our red Terran oh, Protoss player. Good heavens. In the top left, it is Green Bird Clan, Wisco HC. And that is a green bird. I think it's a... Parakeet, maybe? It's a green parakeet? That's a thing? I don't know enough about birds to tell you if green parakeets, parakeets are a thing. Here, I'm going to ask Google a question. What color can parakeets be? Parakeets can come in many colors. Lemon lime, mix of green, yellows, common in pet birds. Oh, okay. So wild budger budgerigars. Budgies, I think. So a budgie is a kind of a parakeet? I'm learning so much about birds. Anyway, uh, Random Cheese is making a gateway. So I would assume Random Cheese is cannon rushing my butt if I came up against this guy in ladder, but nope. That is not what's happening here. Wisco coming on in and again, probe scouting someone whose name is Random Cheese is a great idea. <laughs> Comes in, sees the double gas. That's an early second gas for what, you know, what you want to do here but this looks like a pretty standard opening from random cheese gonna be gate gonna be cyber core double gate cyber core here from wisco hc2 so this looks like a pretty normal pvp but i am wondering if maybe it's dt's is it gonna be like a mothership rush or something man i'd love a good mothership rush i really would like a good mothership rush Anywho, anywho, so gonna try to block the attempt of expanding here. Oh, and the pylon block too for random cheese. Not able to expand now because Wisco's here. 
Gonna Chrono Boost out a Zealot to deal with this pylon because expanding is kind of a big part of what Random Tease wants to do right now. He only has two workers on this gas. I'm not sure if that's intentional or not. I guess maybe we will find out. But we're just making two stalkers here. So, oh. dude, this might be one of those games where it's like, did you make a Zealot instead of two stalkers or like a sentry and a stalker? You lose. Just kind of build order lossy stuff. And then <laughs> Wisco gets a cybernetics core down, blocking the expansion of Random Cheese more. Random Cheese is like, maybe I should... He only has one gate, too. Dude, this might just be lost. These stalkers are like, well, we're going to show up. There's going to be one zealot to deal with. There's going to be two zealots to deal with, which isn't actually all that bad. Not even close. So, yeah, this... Oh, but then we're proxying a stargate. Random cheese. Hey! Proxying a stargate. So, the stalkers... Oh, the stalkers what? Free probe is free. Dude, that pylon dying is huge, which is why secondary pylon is warping in. Very important job, secondary pylon. And an oracle being produced. Wisco is expanding behind this. Doesn't have anything to deal with an oracle. No shield battery, no cannon, no nothing. This is going to get intense. This is going to get real intense all of a sudden. Uh, where's the... Okay, I was like, three stalkers? That's weird. Okay, shield battery buying time. Shield battery can heal that pylon. Nope. Oh, no. It was too... Where did backup pylon go? Wasn't there a backup? Oh, there is. Oh, but the shield battery died before it could be backed up. Oh, no. But this pylon is making warp gate happen, and this cannon do good stuff. So trying to fall back and not get smashed by this cannon in the face. Meanwhile, there we go. Meanwhile, this guy shows up. Uh, get seven kills and then should really head down and try to kill the rest of them. But two stalkers are here. <gasps> the timing was actually incredible. Ooh, Oracle gets wiped out. Those stalkers, I'm pretty sure he warped them in. Not really anticipating an Oracle showing up. I don't think he knew that was going to happen. But Warp Gate finishes. I don't know how important that's going to be to Random Cheese winning or losing this game. But uh, losing your Cyber Core really hurts, man. Okay, well, the cyber core means you can't make any stalkers or sentries. Are we seriously back? Or adepts. Dude, dude. You have... Okay. <laughs> this oracle casually has 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 total kills. It's 22 to 4 workers. Uh, I don't think you're in the position where you have to fight this yet. But also... Okay, the cannons are... Golly, the cannons are putting in work there. Okay, focus the injured stalker. Ooh, look at him putting it at the back, though. Is this all you have? This is so sad. This is so sad. Random Cheese might lose this thing just because... He doesn't have anything to deal with four stalkers. Worker count is abysmaling here right now for random cheese. That's not even a word. It's not even a word, but that's how abysmal it is. Yeah, this... Okay, he's going to recall one stalker back home to deal with this 13-kill oracle who probably could... Maybe can fight and win? Shields take full damage from, like, everything, right? But I guess... I mean, if you've taken a ton of damage already, you probably don't want to fight it, so... Yeah, just... Bam, 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 bam. That's an oracle with 16 kills. 17 kill oracle. Really not too bad at all. Not too shabby. On the other side, though, the stalkers are just winning on a mortal! Oh! If there's anything that can deal with these stalkers, it's an immortal. Dude, stalker dead. Stalker three shot. Void Ray helps too. Nice! Okay, so it is nine to five workers. Lol. Wilts Wisco has a better worker count. And two bases, but if you have nine workers, having two bases isn't really all that valuable. Army value is 15 to 2, where Random Cheese has a Void Ray, an Immortal, and an Oracle. And they all walked into a bar, and the bartender said, why the long face? I don't think Wisco has enough money to withstand, withstand, withstand or sustain this attack. Another Immortal is coming out. Production tab here for Wisco is, um, 
shield battery. Ooh, I love the idea of a stasis sword right there. So then you bait the stalker into it, right? Oh, I guess it doesn't even really matter. Yeah, you can't shield battery overcharge through prismatic alignment or a uh, immortal, guys. Oh! <laughs> And then the stasis catches the probes. It didn't really matter. That's a GG. Random Tease gets the win. Seven minutes and 18 seconds. That was so fun. Hmm. I'm having the time of my life right now. I hope you're having the time of your life too. Because goodness. This has been awesome. Okay. Last cheese of the day. Guess who it is? It's Mad Scientist and Bits Please. They're back for the final game of Cheese Compilation for July 2024. Bottom left. It's going to be Team Enemy. A Red Protoss Beast Mode. And then down here, another Protoss player. It is Soccer Saver with an Overmind spinning logo from Brood War. Very cool stuff. And in the top right, it's going to be Protoss Mad Scientist. And I'm guessing Terran Bits, please. Yes, indeed it is. With the cheese spinning logos. And both of their portraits are Juanito. Special. The Mexican StarCraft 2 player. All right, what's the play here? What's the play here, Protoss, Terran, Cheese, Arama? This is Nightscape. I feel like this is a 2v2 version of a 1v1 map from like Heart of the Swarm days. Am I wrong about this? I feel like I played 1v1s on this map, but it, it's been adjusted to be a 2v2 now. Are they doing that? Are they bringing in old 1v1 maps and 2v2ing them and putting them in the uh, team ladder pool, because I kind of love that. So, so, oh, soccer saver. Soccer saver's cannon rushing. Ah, uh, beast mode is also cannon rushing. His forge is later. Guess it doesn't really matter. So, hey, our heroes are being cannon rushed. And also, probably cannon rushing themselves, if we had to guess what's going on. Actually, proxying over here. Proxy Raxing. I think he's probably going for ye old, like, ye old attempt at... Proxy Marauder with slow again. But I don't know. Yeah, these cannons dying are kind of a big deal. These cannot come up. Okay, so that one dies. Mad Scientist has a cannon up here too. And it looks... My gosh. It is, these bases are so big. And Soccer Saber gets it. He gets what he was going for here, the little place to hang out. Oh, and there's a cannon coming up already, too. SCVs are good fighters. They are. They're good at dealing with these cannons. They get extra damage and extra HP because they don't have auto-healing functions. So that dies, but it's too late. Cannon comes up. You got to retreat, man. Mad Scientist can shut this down by getting his own pylon up here. A little bit late to that party, though. This is not looking great. Not looking good. Oh, but hey, Mad Scientist somehow double cannon rushes. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. He throws up cannons right in between the two players' bases. Dude, probes are dying for these cannons. Oh, it didn't even work. That hurts. That actually really hurts that that didn't work. Worker count for beast mode is not good. Uh, this cannon can definitely take down a refinery, but that seems to be about as much as can be afforded here from Soccer Saver. As the Marauders have arrived, they don't have Concussive Shell because we've been dealing with cannon rushes. We don't quite have the cash for that. And, okay, there we go. Now there's five Marauders. I don't think the probes can fight this. Beautiful kiting though. Man, if you can't kite in StarCraft 2, what are you doing with your life? That's it. Yo, oh, Beast Mode and Soccer Saver tap out. Mad Sciences Bits, please are your winners. Worker count is nothing. The cannons are here. The cannons are attacking that Nexus there. A gateway has come up. They held the cannon rush and then counter cheesed and got the win. It was a double cheese finale. <laughs> Where the cheese was early. I mean, they both cheesed each other. Somebody had to win. <laughs> that was amazing. That was great. That was so, so, so good. What an absolutely beautiful display of cheese to wrap this up. Yeah, this is the greatest cheese comp I've ever cast. Had the best, most fun stuff in it. Had the highest level on average cheese in it. 
the plays, like even that ZVZ, which I don't think was necessarily GM, but the drone drilling was super good. Look at this animation. Dude, StarCraft 2 is so beautiful, man. Look at this plasma ball from a cannon hitting the shield of a Nexus. Like, somebody animated this. They didn't have to do it this way. They didn't have to make it so awesome. And, like, when the shield is gone, then we don't get this anymore, and it just hits the Nexus itself. I... Mm -hmm. Whoever did this has probably been laid off by Blizzard by this point, but hats off to you if you're watching this programmer. Visual designer, I don't know. Whatever you did. Whoever decision it was to make this happen and whoever executed that vision, two thumbs up. Love ya. But yeah, end of the day, just a good, good, good hold against the cannon rush. I mean, if you get your opponent to start their cannon rush this far away from your base, you're probably feeling all right about it. And then getting his own cannon up here to deal with anybody causing problems. They dealt with all the stuff inside the main base too, and that's it. GG, well done. Well done, Mad Scientist and Bits, please. And sneaking this guy down here is great. And that's it. That is going to be it for me today. What, a, what an epic cheese compilation this has been. But all good things must come to an end. So that's going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a cheese compilation number 108 for July 2000. 2000 2024 july 2024 man hit that like button hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today you can also catch me on twitter facebook patreon twitch instagram and tiktok i'm out there at slash falcon paladin some variation thereof on all of those social media platforms which is fun and that's gonna be it for me so again thanks so much for watching and until next time as always you take care of yourself mm -hmm.